my name is Klaus Levine, and in this video, we're going to talk about a principle that is crucial to your alternate picking development. In fact, if you use it when you practice, you're all set. If you're not, then you're wasting your time completely. So this is very important, so let's talk about it. When you pick, an inordinate amount of information passes uh, from the brain to the hand and back again all the time, and it goes for both hands. Because you know when you pick up and down, you have to adjust picking depth, you have to adjust how you hold the pick as you pick sometimes. Um, and, and it's a very minute, very small little movement. And the, the hand, so to speak, sends signal, or the, the brain gets signals from the hand all the time about the picking depth, because that has to be in about the same place. So you have about the same resistance when you cross the string. If you go too fine towards the body, you get a very high note, very loud note. If you pick very shallowly and move the pick in this direction, you get a very shallow note. And that picking depth has to be just accurate, because if not, you get different kinds of resistance, and that's going to give you an uneven picking. So that kind of accuracy is one of the huge things that we need to focus on when we develop alternate picking. It's one of the things we practice when we practice alternate picking, whether we know it or not, is accuracy as far as picking depth. But so it's it's an am amazing amount of information that goes on over here that the brain has to process and then adjust as it plays this incredibly fast line, right? And the left hand has to follow that and play the notes of that run as it does it. But playing fast is really like playing slow. When you're playing slow, you're using more details like bending and uh, vibrato. And <laughs> You know, stuff like that. And I'm using uh, my fingers over here to shape the note when I pick, when I'm playing slower lines. As I increase speed, of course, those details disappear. It becomes more simple. And so it becomes more robotic when you play those fast lines. But it's still an amazing amount of information that the brain processes and converts into movement again and again. It's staggering. So how does it do it? Well, it uses a trick that you also use whenever you're confronted with a ton of information. If you get a lot of unrelated, seemingly, pieces of information just thrown at you like that, and you have t thousands of them, you get overwhelmed first, right? You look at that and say, oh, I can't really. Let's say it's weather information. You get a ton of information about how cold or warm it is in different areas in the country, and you get rain and how many millimeters or whatever uh, it rained and all kinds of information. Uh, so what's the first thing you do whenever you're confronted with that much? Just intuitively, what's the first thing you do? You categorize it. You put it in groups. You put it in little boxes and drawers and whatever. So you can say, okay, this is this is one state, and this is another state, perhaps. And this is all, you know, earthquakes and the floods and all those dramatic things that we want to act on right away. So we're going to make that one category that we can that we can focus on right away when that information comes in, right? So now you have it categorized, you have it grouped, you have several little bits of pieces of information collected in one group. And that's what the brain does every time it has to do something or you know, ha ha get an overview of something that's impossible to get an overview over. Because now I can look at it and say, okay, I have three things here, and I can have it in my head and say, okay, that's the, you know, the earthquakes and the stuff, and then there's these two states that it relates to. So I know whenever I have to deal with any of it, I can just go in and pick up the information right there. So how does this relate to guitar playing or practicing alternate picking? Well, every single pick stroke delivers information to the brain, and that um, information then becomes another pick stroke. And the same thing goes for the left hand. So, you know, from two different sources back and forth like that uh, at an incredible speed. So let's just say this is one pick stroke. One little ball here is now not a, a piece of information about the weather, but it's one pick stroke. And I'm just going to start already putting them in order because instead of all over the place, I just have uh, four lines of three dots here. So I've already started categorizing them because of course, when we're talking about guitar playing, it's not visual information anymore. Um, it's, it's feelings, it's, um, it's motions in the hand. So what I do to, to categorize that is really, I divide all these dots up into groups of three. That's the first step, if we're playing triplets anyway. But so I'm going to say this is one group, like I did before with the weather information. This is another group, and so on. So I, I end up with boxes of three notes in them. And this, as I said, this is visual information. In order to make this you know, tangible from a musical perspective, we have to say, okay, we accent every first note. That's how we know that we just started on a new group. 
So we accent every first note here within the three. This could be four notes if it's uh, quadruplets you're playing. But this is da 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 And I'm not thinking about the musical aspect of triplets like da 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 like it's a cool sound, but only about practicing alternate picking and building your skills. Um, so we have four boxes of information now, and the brain can suddenly process that in the same way it processes a huge amount of information using categories or groups or drawers. It's the same thing that happens, because the brain can now say da, 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 ba, da, da, and you know, get, and it can do that. This is slow enough for the brain to work out each and every movement or category, right? This is slow enough. And so it can say da, 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 ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, 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 da. It can focus on the groups, and then you can build the skill of being able to play uh, these other two as accurately as possible. All right, and what the, what if you use these accents? Let me just demonstrate how it sounds first. If you haven't ever, so if I play three notes on one string, right? Um, instead of just picking up and down and hoping that my two hands will be synchronized, I take the first note on that one string and I play it a little louder than the others. My first, really, uh, emphasis on a note will be with a downstroke. The next will be with an upstroke. And then, an, you know, down, up, down, up all the time. And in the beginning, I'm really exaggerating this because, you know, we need to send the signal to the brain, right, about these categories. And then what can happen is that you can have inaccuracies here as long as you don't have it here. If you have these ones down, these accents, then the others are details. They're important details. but then the brain has a chance now of adjusting. This is the accent. And then each time it plays one of the other notes, it looks just oh, it's perhaps a little bit late there. This is not audible. This is, you know, it's so minute little details that we're not, we're not thinking about it. Let's just say that this is even later over here. Well, that doesn't matter that much because I now hit the next accent at exactly the same point. So we had da, da, da. And you can have some of these, you know, go out of, you might be a little early there, a little late there, right on there, right on there. The brain constantly adjusts for this, right? But it cannot adjust every single note. So it just listens for what goes on and then tries to be more accurate the next time around. You can actually feel this when you're playing at a certain speed. You can, you can feel how the brain says, ah, that wasn't too good. Let me do it better next time. And it adjusts a little bit. So it's constantly adjusting. It's like when, you, um, when you're sailing a ship, for instance, you are never on course 100% of the time. Actually, it's like 3% of the time where the ship is on course. It's constantly getting pushed in other directions. So the captain always has, all the time, constantly has to say, okay, in what direction are we going? Okay, that's the course. Set a new course. Go for the target. Then it drifts again. New, you know, it has to do it all the time, just like we do here. Same thing with flying a plane. The plane is, you know, always off course, and you constantly direct until you reach your destination. And the same thing goes for here. We're constantly out of course, but we can't hear it because we have a method. The brain has a method, a trick it uses in in order to get it right. That's one of the huge reasons that you should focus on, uh, and I hope, <laughs> you, I hope you stayed with me through this little presentation, because it's important to understand really how important this is in order for you, you to focus on it when you practice so you don't forget, right? But there's other reasons why accenting is very important. One of them is, of course, if you want to play music, you have to be able to play triplets like da 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 But that's not the reason you're using them when you play alternate picking or practice alternate picking. It's only a matter of being able to sync the two hands, which is also, if you don't have any accents, how's the brain going to know where home is all the time, right? So it's, it's crucial for syncing the two hands, and it's crucial for playing fast to get this process up and running, where the brain can learn to play even more accurately all the time, and then to adjust this all the time at a slower pace, and then faster and faster and faster. Right? So accents are crucial for syncing the two hands and simply for playing fast because you lose the whole, it just becomes a bundle of in this hand, right? This hand, if without the accent, it's just, you know, like that. I used to do that when I, I thought that was how you did it when I was, before I was uh, uh, exposed to any information about alternate picking because that was how my friends would do I would have a fast layer. We got it, right? So it becomes kind of a cramp. 
This is the only way to do it. That's the accent. The difference between that I just did and then, you know, <laughs> the real music thing is the accents. That's it. So let's look at a exercise that you can do where we separate the accents from the actual lick and play the accents first and then the lick. But, and that's just a cool lick in itself, even though it's a, it's a amazingly effective exercise. <laughs> So let's have a look at it. Uh, as you can see, this is a very simple exercise uh, that really owns in on the, the two challenges of having accents and then playing accents with notes. So uh, we're using this six note shape in the key of A minor or C major. You have the ninth, 12th and 10th fret. <laughs> Weird order, I just told you. Nine, 10 and 12 there on the D string. And nine, 10 and 12 on the G string as well. And what I do is I take the top note and I simply start picking away on that and I don't really introduce any notes before I have the accents down at whatever tempo I'm aiming at with just that one note. So um, I start picking that and I have an accent on the first pick stroke, right? So that is I go deeper in towards the body of the guitar and that requires me to use a little more effort to pass the, 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 the pick there and that becomes my accent. And then for the for the next note, I'm picking uh, silently, or and you might want to exaggerate this in the beginning. So, so you got one downstroke that's loud, and then you have two not so loud strokes, right? So that's the one set here because we have three notes. Remember the big box on the on the <laughs> table up there? So we go right, and then the next one is the same, but now we start with an upstroke and have have a loud note there. So we go. Right, so we go down, up, down, and then we go up, down, up, right? And that loud note there is essential. It's cru this is very hard for you, even though you've been practicing alternate picking for some time. This is your time uh, to make a huge leap in your development. Um, so this is the first exercise, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, right? And then you simply do that. until you have that up to speed. Let's say this is your target speed, your first target speed. Or what about here? Then you start adding notes, but you remember the accent. So you go one, two, three on the first string. You have down, up in the 10th fret, and then down in the 9th fret. So down in the 12th, and then up in the 10th, and down in the 9th. And then new string, 12th fret, up loud note, right? Dig into the string and then down in the 10th fret with not so much power and up in the 9th fret. So it's kind of reversed down here. So down, up, down, 12, 10, 9. Fourth finger, second finger and first finger. That's your first exercise. But listen to how much difference there is between uh, the, the accents and the non-accents. And I'm really exaggerating here. Because they almost become inaudible when you play very fast. So if I'm, for instance, right? You can hear them sort of, but they're in my body. And that's the most important thing. You don't really need to be able to hear them at all, but they need, it needs to be in you, right? If you want to really emphasize those um, um, accents and you want to sync the two hands, what you can do is have muted strokes and mute with your left hand. So the, the, as we talked about before, the accent is played, but the non-accents are not played. Those are just... You know, you just put your finger on the on the uh, string just to mute it. Get a little. 
right? So you go. And so you go. Ba, da, 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 da. And this little movement here can also be a little bit of a tricky thing until you get it up to speed and you can do it. See, this is perfect synchronization because, you know, I can, I can do the accents with my left hand as well, and I can do them with the right hand. So, you know, if I have muted string. Right? So that, was, that is what brings the two hands together. So let's play the, the exercise, this first exercise, really um, slowly. Here we go. Up. That's a downstroke. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. And then again. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. That's it. <laughs> when you play down, of course, you've got to... Right? So that's it. And then da, 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 and keep the accents. You're building the structure of alternate picking when you use this exercise. Let's just look into how you can uh, just you know change this exercise a little bit. You could, for, for instance, you could go you could go down one position and then then up again. So you could go. Right? It's the same thing as going. Right? The same amount of notes there, but I'm just going six notes down in one six note shape. And then I move down to the next six note shape in the scale here, which is in the seventh, ninth, and tenth on both the two middle strings there on the D and G string. And I just play up. Right? You can look in the tabs if you. And then you could design little exercises like that. You can also stay on one string and go. And then keep the accents at all times, right? So that was about it for this time. I hope to see you in the next video about the alternate picking challenge.